My name's Carrie Ann. Welcome to the Geek Girl Diaries. Lately, I've been wondering, how does the internet actually work? How do computers communicate with each other? What's an IP address? I think one of the most complicated topics of computing is networking and understanding how networks work. So I've asked my friend Matt over at Raspberry Pi for Beginners to help explain it to me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Matt from the Raspberry Pi for Beginners YouTube channel and I'm here to teach you a little bit about how the internet really works. And we're going to show you how what people currently understand um, how the internet works and then break down each component and then from there you should be able to identify much easier how it will be to fix a problem. So most people's understanding of how the internet works is you have a laptop and a browser, something like Chrome or Internet Explorer, and you type in the website you're trying to go to. That request will go to your, um, your router your wireless router or you know wired router and you have to ha make sure that you have some connection to that and if that's working everything's okay then there's a good chance that you have an internet connection and everything's okay and you can get to your web page however there's a lot more that's going on in the background and your request to get that website has to go through lots of different pieces of computer equipment so we're just going to break that down and have a look at all of the components that are in place so the first thing you have to do is have your um, your laptop or a PC or your Raspberry Pi that is on your um, local network. You connect that either via a physical RJ45 um, CAT5 cable um, or you connect it via a wireless device that is a business class wireless device. Um, and if you had a switch you'd be connecting it, physically plugging it into something like that which is a small 8 port switch. And a switch allows you to connect multiple network devices together but we'll go through that in a bit more detail in a moment. The next step is to go to a router. Now in a home environment, these are often into one device, but in a business environment, they're separated into separate components. The next step would be a modem, and this is what converts your local network um, to the internet. Then you have to go contact an ISP, I'm gonna say BT, because it's the most common in the UK. Um, and then we get routed all over the internet, and, and that's what the ISPs will do for us. You may have another ISP at the other side, um, just Virgin Media, for example. And they do the same with the side. So they'll convert your connection into via a modem, into a router, into a network switch, and then you'll probably have that connected via some um, cabling, again, some network cabling, like we see at the top there. And that'll connect into a big rack, um, which will be hosted in a data center, which is a dedicated building just for holding specialized computer equipment. And then you'll get something like this, which is a, that's a Dell server. Um, that is a dedicated computer um, that sits in a rack and um, can host websites and all other fancy things. And that's the basic connection um, that your request for the website is making. So let's take the first step in our journey of understanding how the internet really works, which is to have a look at our local network connection in our own property. And we're going to be looking at networking, which is how we connect multiple devices together, so PCs and laptops together to talk. And we're going to be looking at um, IPv4, which is the um, internet protocol language that the uh, internet works on. So um, we have in our um, network um, two machines, and we're going to connect them together via network cables. And we're going to plug one um, network cable into the PC, one into the switch, and repeat that process on the second, third, and fourth machines that we have on our network. Um, and then if you want to communicate, so say this machine here wants to communicate to this machine here, they need to be numbered so that we have a unique address they can communicate to. A bit like, you know, a um, bit like five mobile phones. Um, how do they all talk to each other? Well, they call each other and they have phone numbers. But with networking, we have what we call IP addresses. An IP address looks like this. It's made up of what we call four octets. Um, octets are uh, a block of numbers. So we've got one, two, three, four blocks. In this example, we're using what's called a private address range. There are others, but I won't go into too much detail on those. And this is what it might look like if we gave them their IP addresses. So 192.168.1.1 .1 through to 1.5. And if you want to communicate, we'd make that call or that connection. So it'd be like phoning um, a mobile phone, but instead of dialing a number, we'd be typing in 192.168.1.3 if you wanted to connect from this machine to this machine. So we have our two PCs that are going to make a connection to each other. On the left hand side we have what we call the source, which is where the connection is coming from. And then we have on the right, which is the destination where our connection is going to go to. So like any conversation, whether or not it's speaking to somebody or what 
telephone, making a phone call, you have to start with some sort of protocol on how you actually begin a conversation. And um, what we have is the three-way um, handshake. Okay, so the first part of this three-way handshake is um, the first, what we call the SIN packet. The SIN is like a hello. It sort of says, I'm here, I would like to make a connection. And we have a look at this packet, and we can see that it has the source that's defined on it, which is the IP address of where it's come from and the destination of where it's going to. So what we're then going to do is we're then going to send that SIN packet to our machine. This will then take that, look at it, read it, realize that it was destined for itself, and then it will reply with a SIN ACK. The ACK is like an acknowledgement. It's saying, I know that you sent that. And what you'll see is that the packet will change. Well, it's, a, it's a new packet, so the details in this packet will be different. So we'll have here where it will say um, the source of the connection is now dot two, which is this machine. But the destination is back to the original source. And that will be sent back to our machine. And then once um, that's happened, our machine will acknowledge the acknowledgement and will send back its own ACK back to the other machine. And again, our source was where it came from. The destination was the dot two address where it went to. So it's this sort of, hello, how are you? I'm okay. Once that's happened, they'll actually set up a network connection and will start transferring information. That depends massively on what you're doing, whether or not it's a web connection or an SSH connection or an FTP connection. Um, all those different things will depend on what happens after that. But this first initial bit is pretty much always the same in most environments. Gosh, I never knew there was so much involved. Maybe if I saw a real life version of plugging all the equipment in together, I'd understand it a little bit more. This piece of software that we're going to download, install and run, it's called Wireshark. It's a network analyzing tool. It's used by um, people to troubleshoot network problems and people to listen and sniff onto networks. It's essentially a, a network wiretapping tool. Um, but it, what it will allow us to do is to um, packet analyze um, our connection, which means we can look at every single packet that goes back and forth between each connection. And we're going to see that um, SYN, SYN ACK, ACK connection. So we're going to go to Capture and Interfaces, and then we're going to find the interface we want to listen on. I'm going to go for the Intel Gigabit Network Connection, which is my wired um, connection on my laptop. And then I'm going to type into this, the filter um, a string, which is basically IP.src, source, and then equals the IP address, and then or um, IP.dest equals, and then the IP address again. So basically I'm looking for any traffic that is to or from source or destination equals um, my Raspberry Pi. I'm going to click apply and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a, an SSH connection to my Raspberry Pi and what we'll see there is it's opened up a TCP connection first and we'll see the SYN, SYNAC, ACK and um, that's our SSH connection. So we have there on the left hand side the source of the packet. Each of those lines you see there is a different packet in the connection. We also have the destination and then we have there in the info field what is going on in the actual packet and we can see there the three-way handshake of our TCP network connection. 
Wow, thanks Matt for your expertise in this video. It's been really good to work with you and I've learned so much, especially when I'm doing anything with Raspberry Pi. Your channel is the first place I go to, to get the information that I need. And now I understand a bit more about networking, it'll be easier for me when I'm using my Pi or I'm configuring it, especially when I'm looking at the network interfaces, I'll be able to know what I'm doing. I'm Carrie Ann, you've been watching the Geek Girl Diaries and Raspberry Pi for beginners. If you've got any ideas or suggestions for more videos, please use the comments below. Remember, if you like Geek Girl Diaries, subscribe, share it, like the videos, and keep me going. Take care, and remember, I'm just a mouse click away.